Teen Parent TV News, covering the issues that are important to young moms and their families. When teen girls find out they are pregnant, the impact is immediately felt in their young lives. Some are not mature enough to meet the needs of another human being. Parents need to make the mature decision on whether or not to raise a child or leave the upbringing to someone else. This hotly debated subject is adoption. When teenagers are faced with an unintended or unplanned pregnancy, how come they don't consider adoption? Let's find out why. What we find is in the last decade is that adoption as an option has been almost hushed. That agencies, hospitals, networking agencies, the schools have all hushed the issue of offering adoption to young women. As a result, it has become that only one to four percent of young pregnancies are given up in adoption. What are some of the reasons for why this has become so low? Part of it is that the agencies, the hospitals, the social workers aren't doing their job in letting them have a full idea of what their options are and including adoption as one of the options that they can choose. The other is, is that as a result of this hushing, the peers around them almost become negative towards people that make this decision to the point that they have to lie to the people around them and keep it hushed in silence so that they don't find out and cause almost a henpecking result onto themselves. Making them feel like less of a person for making a decision that is very responsible and somewhat sacrificial. People don't think about adoption as an option because of peer pressure. People are always saying it's not a good idea and that since you um, got yourself pregnant you should be able to take care of it. I was adopted and I was brought home when I was three days old. I never felt any different from the rest of the people in my family because I know they love me and they, they gave me everything they had. Um, I had my daughter at age 19 and I'm sure I'll adopt later on because I was given a chance and I believe that other kids should be given a chance to have things that other kids would have. They are giving their babies up for adoption because I think they want to prove to themselves and to other people that they are just as capable as raising young children as adults are in their middle ages. It crossed my mind a lot when I was pregnant. I was in a foster home and I wasn't sure if I was going to be out of a foster home at the time, you know. I didn't really want her to have a bad life in a foster home, you know. Um, Things straightened up and I just started going, you know, I was at the doctors and I just fell in love with her and I just, you know, I couldn't. Well, I think that adoption is good if a parent cannot think that they can take care of the child. I considered it myself, but my mom said that she would help me take care of it. My family doesn't believe in adoption. We're all teen parents and I was going to get my baby up, but now once I hit about seven months pregnant, I wouldn't have been able to give her up. I think adoption is a beautiful thing because there's some parents out there who cannot have kids and that would love to bring in a kid. I've been given the greatest opportunity into being chosen by a young mother to be the parent of a child that she is going to bear any day. Unfortunately, what she has found is that in hospitals, caseworkers, agencies and school systems, she has been confronted with a negativeness, a questioning of her decision and her choice. And as a result, she's had to lie and silence her experience from those around her. It's a hard decision to give up a baby that you bear in your womb for nine months. But in her heart, she knows that in her situation that she cannot offer the kind of life she wants for her baby. Why is it that the agencies and the hospitals and the caseworkers can't support her very responsible decision in this situation? We'd like to see that change, and we hope that people can change their attitude and support these young women when they do make this decision. Teen Parent TV News will be right back after these messages. Hope and hard work. Building a better life for our babies with Teen Parent TV. Teen parents are lazy. No, we're not! Excuse me, I don't think so. I get up every morning, I take my son to daycare, I pay rent, I go to work, I go to school. Now does that sound like a lazy person to you? Teen parents and their babies have no future. Yes, we do! I plan to graduate a year early. I already have my college fund set up. I plan to be an architect. 
and I'm buying transportation so my baby and I can have a better future. I did it. I can't believe it. I did it. <laughs> I guess teen parents really don't want a handout. They just want a hand. Within the drama of teenage parenthood, we rarely hear about teen dads. Here's a profile on teen dads. I date a woman with children. Some men date women with children, but only find the women that they want to take care of. But in my case, I find that it's a package deal because you're assuming some of the fatherly roles when you date this woman. That means that when I go out with her, I have to take the kids out. I have to get up in the morning sometimes with them, take care of them, feed them, change them, um, help them grow, teach them what things right, what things are wrong. I feel that if part of it enriching my life is that in their life, that I'm helping them learn and so they don't make mistakes like I did when I was growing up. And helping with her deal with them because it is a little stressful. The change in my life is the responsibilities of taking care of them, learning things about them that I've never really known about kids, new things. <laughs> They're kind of my teacher and I'm kind of their teacher. I owe it to him to be there for him, you know, since I helped bring him in, in here to this world, I should be there to make sure that I can help him in any way possible. So that's the main reason why I stay around. I want to, you know, make it a way so when he's older that he can go to college, since I didn't go to college or anything. But I would like for him to go and, you know, do something that he wants to do. Not something that he's doing because it's a paycheck. From child to form a man, every kid I see is two parents couldn't understand. How could this be? All the nights I cried for daddy, but daddy didn't come to me. From his love came me, I deduced, but nowhere in sight was dad when I broke loose. Couldn't be responsible, it's tragical. My father figure he had to go to leave me by my lonely abandoned. My mom's face was a sad one. Don't fuss or fight about the other. Someone needs to take your place, my brother. You hold the cards in your hand. Are you willing to give your only child to the next man? Be a father to your child, son. You'll be running in circles of pain, so don't run. Cause you and me, we are one. But the question remains, who am I made from? As thoughtful and as well made as Teen Parent TV News is, it is not our policy to encourage teen and adolescent pregnancy. Stop teenage pregnancy. Do not enter teen pregnancy. Yield to a different future. Having a baby just to have someone to love isn't the key. How can you take on the responsibility to raise and to take care of a child when you can't even take care of yourself? A teenager without children has a lot of opportunities and independence to do whatever they want to do, whenever they want to do it. You have a lot of freedom and you can make a lot of different choices. But when you have a child or two children, you have to make those decisions based around the children. You have to do and make your ch career choices and everything around those children's lives. So my advice to any teenager that wants to have children is look at your opportunities. You have other things that you can do a lot better without children because you have more freedom that way. Take it from someone who knows. Don't become a teen parent. There are many downsides to teen pregnancy. One of the downsides is the initial reaction of our friends. In the beginning, they are enthusiastic, but in the end, they aren't there. Once you become a teen mom, you really learn who your true friends are. The people that you thought were your friends all of a sudden don't come around, they don't call, and they really don't want to hear what's new about you and your baby. What they do want to know is who said what, he said this, and why does that guy look so fine? And all you really want to talk about is 
what your baby did today and how much she or he is growing and how proud you are of that baby. In most cases, your friends don't know who you are and forgot you even existed. And that can hurt you, make you feel ashamed, unwanted, and make you feel real bad. Sometimes you can be in your bedroom at night crying over it, but you got to remember that you got that baby to take care of, and there's no more fretting or just whining over the past or the friends that you lost. You got to take hold of what you got now and keep going forward, no matter how much it hurts. Let's check the weather forecast facing teen moms in the next decade. Many different weather fronts face young moms due to revenue cutbacks, property tax limitations, and a lack of will. We have an overcast covering the nation as funding for educational opportunities diminish. Clerical employment is reduced due to marketplace restructuring. Some of us feel so overwhelmed by our responsibilities that we have given up trying, trying to look for a job or improve ourselves. But with hope and hard work, Stormy Monday turns into a positive and productive 24-7. Just because daycare and educational funding dries up does not mean you cannot accomplish your goals. One job leads to another and another. So keep striving, keep wanting, keep planning a better life for you and your baby. Because with hope and hard work, sunny days are in the forecast. Teen Parent TV News will be right back after these messages. 15 years old, having a baby, I know it's hard. Responsibilities kind of catch you off guard. You get stressed out time after time. Dropping out of school will be heavily on your mind. Stay in school, hard work pays off without education in your life. You'll be lost, so be patient. And believe in yourself, no education is bad for your health. Think about your baby and do the right things. It ain't over until the fat lady sings so be patient and reach for the best there's hope for you girlfriend so don't settle for less this story just in teen parent tv news just found out some reasons why teen parents are not showing up for work or school she wasn't there today and was late yesterday well thank you i just spoke with the attendance office and this student failed to show up for class today Let's find out why. Why aren't you in school today? Well, I went to pick her up with my friends last night. Then we went to the movies. And I had to pick up my son. So I didn't get home until real late. Young moms, let's get our priorities straight. We must go to school, go to work, keep our appointments, and change our attitudes. Well, I don't want to go to school because teachers always want something. They want homework. They want schoolwork. Work, work, work. And then when you go to gym, they want you to dress down. Who I look like? Let's educate our friend. There are many benefits to school, jobs, and showing up on time for other appointments. People, they rely on you more. You get called on more often to do things because they know you're going to be there. Um, you get good grades, and that's one of the major parts of good attendance. You learn more because you can't learn anything if you're never there. You, know. you make a good name for yourself. I mean, would you rather be known as that person who's always late or that person who you know will be here? I'm working to change my attitude because that attitude hurts me and my son, and I need a future for me and my son. Good attendance is important because it sets a good example for you and your child. This has been Trenise Rozier from Teen Parent TV News. Hope and hard work building a better life for our babies with Teen Parent TV. Teen Parent TV. Get up and move, get on the get-go. Opportunities will flee if you move too slow. Don't sit in a chair and let time pass you by watching TV. And then you wonder why you're unemployed with nothing to do. 
You let the chance just pass on by you. So get up and move so you can get somewhere. If you don't drive, then just pay that bus fare. When outside, it is a sunny day. Get off the couch and stop being lazy. When on the job and there's extra to do, do it yourself instead of someone else doing it for you. Get up and move and be responsible. Come on, we know y'all is capable. Watch for Baby Protest on Teen Parent TV 3. Most teen parents are hopeful for a brighter future for themselves and their children, but they know it takes a lot of hard work. Self-education is a sure way to a brighter future. One place to educate yourself is the library, and there's nothing square about the library. There's no better place for availability of books and no better atmosphere to teach yourselves than the public library. At the library, you can research, investigate, and look up any issues or subjects you have questions about. For young parents, the library is a great teaching tool for your baby as well as yourself. Other ways to educate yourself is to watch educational programs on television, speak with someone who works in a profession which you are interested, and volunteering time to gain experience. Also, the library is a good, clean, safe place to spend time. I enjoy reading to my daughter, Tracy. Oh. I think the main reason oh. I enjoy reading to her is because my mother read to me, and I feel reading is an important part of a young person's life. Tracy and I enjoy reading Dr. Seuss, Sesame Street, and a number of different children novels. I myself enjoy reading the B.C. Andrews and her Cutler series, not to mention some romance novels. I believe that reading is a very important part of a young person's life, and that's why I like to read to my daughter, Tracy. I read to my baby because I feel that it'll help her out in the future. She'll probably like to read and do a lot of fun things with books. And I read her books that don't have any words to them so that I can make up stories to them. And she likes those better because, you know, the pictures are really colorful, so, you know, she plays at the books and stuff. And I usually read big, super thick, trashy romance novels because they're trashy, and I like those. And remember, when you read, your baby sees you read, and your baby will learn to read. This has been Rochelle Brodigan reporting for Teen Parent TV News. Teen Parent TV News will be right back after these messages. We're eavesdropping on Mariah Taylor, discussing one of the most common medical problems facing our babies, ear infections. Here are her tips on recognizing and preventing ear infections. The other thing is to be alert to the symptoms, such as a baby that can't talk will put his finger in its ear, will pull at the ear. Sometimes will, nine times out of ten, will have a fever, which tells you that there's some, something going on. That child is, is, there's an imbalance in the body. Some African-American teen parents have a problem saying hair is good or hair is bad. I'm here to tell you that all hair is good. There is no such thing as bad hair or good hair. It all comes down to one thing, and that's good grooming. There is no such thing as bad hair. It's all human hair. Opportunity knocks. Learn to take advantage of opportunities. Number one, you have to get up early in the morning. Number two, be on time. Number three, be willing to listen. Number four, be eager to learn. And number five, support your friends who are working hard to get an education and hold down a job. Teen parents are not monolithic, meaning we are not all the same. Here is a look at three unique approaches to parenting, as well as support groups for young moms. Here is Dorothy Wedge with our story. North Portland Youth Service Center Young Moms Program. One of the reasons this parenting group is so successful and effective is because it is ran from the young moms up than from the director down. In giving control to the young women of the group, they're learning to take care of themselves, they're learning to talk, they're learning to make decisions about little things at first, okay? And this is really, really important. This is what a support group is about to me. The other piece is that they're helping each other, they're listening to each other. And if they've been through it, they have the expertise. I learned how to be more self-assured about myself. I, was, I wasn't confident enough for me to go out in the world and, and finish my schooling and get the training I needed to get a job. 
And I got that independence with Ricky because I wasn't even able to talk in, in a group like this. I was too shy to do it, so it's still hard, but not as hard as it used to be. Young moms define the issues as well as searching for a solution. Housing, Housing. 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 They understand what their needs are, and I think that the community needs to listen to them. So, to that end, we've gone out into the community. We've had young women sit on the board here at the Youth Service Center. We have somebody going to the Teen Parent Forum. We've had people sit on many, many different boards and committees. The advice I have is for people to believe in themselves that, yes, they can do it. Not to say that, you know, how people usually say that teen moms aren't going to make it in the world because they had their kids young or anything. And I had Jose when I was 16, and I was able to make it. So. Another issue facing young moms is the youth gangs phenomenon, which has dramatically changed the living conditions in most urban neighborhoods. Gangs have changed the world for young people today by the way of wearing a certain color as to being red or blue. If you wear the color red, you'd be known as a blood. If you wear the color blue, you'd be known as a crip. And if mine saying a certain word or bled to another person, you'd be known as a gang member. And to go into a certain neighborhood, you'd be known as a gang member just by standing in that neighborhood. Well, the community's changed a lot from the gang, um, the growth of the gangs. Uh, no longer do we have families uh, that live in single unit housing where there is the mother and father and that there is some kind of structure and order. We now have uh, young folks that are basically raising themselves from birth and the only instruction they're getting are from peers. And most of their peers are, lack, are lacking the basic uh, ingredients or that are having that basic foundation of decision making or reasoning uh, skills. The GIFT program was created to deal with gang affected young moms. Coordinator Stephanie Pittman tells us how GIFT deals with the gang issue. Well, how we deal with that is through role models. And what we do is we do a series of activities in terms of the moms taking their babies out into society and, and, and seeing tangible role models. Um, we address the uh, babies being dressed as gang members. We address the mothers in terms of them dressing properly and not that wearing that gang attire out in the public. And basically teaching them the quote-unquote basic parenting skills that um, to help them uh, get back out into the mainstream. How important is the male role in the parenting process and what exactly is my portion of the gift? The male role in the parenting process is very important because the world is made up of females and males. If it is going to work as it should, they both have to contribute. The male has to model for the children what a man's role is as a woman has to model what a woman's role is or they will have no idea of what they're training to be. My role in the gift is to bring that male model to these young ladies and to their babies. Show them what a man should be doing, what his function, if it's being executed correctly, should be, and therefore give them something that they can strive for and pattern their children after. They teach us how to be better parents and um, to um, be better ourselves and take care of our babies. And even though we're all black and young, that we that would put us down and say that we're no good and all this stuff, that we can't graduate. I graduated from Grant High School. Every few years, there's a different approach to parenting, from parents having to interact at every moment to allowing the child to be his or herself. Here's a unique parenting approach called the Together Model, which combines play and respect. Pat Trotty tells us how this approach is different. The main way that our program differs from the traditional program in working with children is that our focus is on play. And when you have the main focus on play, it creates a very comfortable, relaxed atmosphere in which parents can be themselves with their children. They can allow their children to be themselves. And everything that comes from play usually brings on a positive attitude about the way they are with their children. And so what happens is 
good self-esteem starts to develop. The kids learn to take care of themselves. The parents learn that the children can take care of themselves, and they have a good time here doing it. What I've learned is to respect your children, to um, ask them when can you pick them up to change them, and just respect their feelings. You actually do not teach parents how to be good parents. What you do is give them a setting in which they can feel comfortable with their child, becoming themselves. The part of them that is still a child can play. The part that plays with their child starts to develop. They get a closeness based on something that's totally safe, and that's the world of play. And so what we do is model how they could play with the baby, alternatives to other behaviors, um, offering a child a choice as opposed to telling a child that something he's doing is wrong, uh, making sure that there is a safe, comfortable setting, giving children choices. And that's the way the parents learn to be with their children. This is my daughter, Gabrielle. I just wanted to encourage all you teen parents out there to succeed. Thank you for watching Teen Parent TV News.